Hey guys, and welcome back to Removable for Race, and it is at last time for some more Empower action. Now, the SUV coupe market is one of the most hotly contested in the auto industry, and today we are looking at the one that started it all in its new and most powerful form, and that is this, the X6M competition. So guys, you join us here now in a sunny Arizona for the brand new X6M competition. Now, this market for performance SUVs has really hotted up in the last half decade, particularly with the intro of cars like the Stelvio and the GLC 63F fighting for the top spot of the fastest SUV on the ring, at least until the new RS Q8 came out and became the fastest SUV there now. And of course, recent times has also seen the emergence of super SUVs such as the Lamborghini Urus and Aston's super luxury DBX. And there's an upcoming Ferrari too called the Purusongwe. And then of course you've got bulbous looking things like the Tesla Model X. I don't think so. You see, and the reason why is because unlike a normal performance SUV, like say the X5 battling the GLE, in the coupe arena, it's really all about design because that's the pull towards these cars. The customer of these cars is looking for the most sporting looking and muscular car that they can get their hands on. And that's why we've returned to the original one. And that is of course BMW's X6, the one that started the trend in the first place. First in concept form, the original X6 made everybody wonder, why would you actually want a car that's hindered in terms of its space compared to a normal SUV? And then it's got a weird shape. But slowly but surely, the uptake began on this shape of car. And then other manufacturers got in on it too, with Mercedes and their GLE, Audi with the Q8. And of course, there's even a Porsche now in the Cayenne Coupe. So the formula was then proved as successful by BMW. Now this first generation also brought on the first X6M and in fact it was the first X-Drive M product ever alongside the X5. That car featured the then S63 V8 twin turbo engine with 547 brake horsepower and 680 newton meters which was pretty impressive for its time. Now it was an okay looking car but when the second generation came it added that much more muscle. It was also slightly longer so you got more boot space and this time the car is using the S63 engine now with 567 brake horsepower, 750 newton meters and an improved zero to 60. But after this and while this car existed things changed in the performance SUV market. No longer were performance SUVs considered fat and slow with the introduction of cars like the Stelvio and the GLC being so bloody fast with sub four seconds zero to 60s it was time for the X6 to evolve and it has. So here comes generation three and this is the X6M competition. Now the headline figures, simply put, this is a beast. 625 brake horsepower, the same 750 newton meters and a hugely improved 3.8 second zero to 60 makes this car tread on the heels of that so-called super SUV Urus. Really, really impressive figures in this X6. But of course, the engine is more clever. It's got a forged crankcase, which makes it more rigid. It's got specific mountings by BMW M in that same regard as well. The engine uses two twin scroll turbochargers with a hot V setup, making the engine response immediate, just like a natural engine. So it's gonna be a super sweet engine to drive as you will see later. But of course, power is just one side of the story. We've got much more that's been changed by BMW M in this car. For example, we've got M specific steering rack in this car to make the steering feel that much better. We've got the M X drive all wheel drive system, which is specific to this car. And that is linked then to the M differential on the rear. It's all a variable setup with torque vectoring and a rear bias setup on this car. And then of course you've got M adapter suspension, again, specific to the X6M. And how can we forget the M performance exhaust system, which is also in this car. So a lot of changes, but I think it all pales in comparison when you look at the design of this car. And design is important because unlike some other manufacturers, there is no technical difference between the X6 and the X5. So it is really a case of which design you prefer and which car suits your lifestyle more. And in that regard, let's have a look how beastly this car looks. I think it's 
for me, the best looking SUV coupe in the market, particularly with all this extra mDNA. And to explore that mDNA, let's turn this car into a normal exit of the new generation. Now you really, really see and appreciate the massive details that a huge boost of mDNA has given this car. Let's first start with the front. When you compare the two, how aggressive is this? The huge M-specific grille on the front here looks absolutely brilliant in a gloss black. It's big, it's not as big as some of the future BMWs we're gonna have, but it is very intimidating, it looks great. We've got massive air intakes with aero features on the front, again, in gloss black. I don't think I've ever seen an SUV with such huge intakes looking so dominant on the front end. I really love the side wing behind the front wheel arch of the car. It's unique and specific to the X6. The X5 doesn't get that lovely design feature. We've of course got M mirrors on the car as well. There's a host of different alloy wheel designs. These are probably the coolest with the multi-spokes. But I think the real story of design on this car for me, it's on the rear. This is where for me, it takes the cake versus the X5M. I mean, just look at those rear arches. I really feel a deep connection between this rear and when you look at something like the M2 and the M8, you see the DNA of those two, the strongest, in my opinion, in terms of mDNA in the entire lineup, seeping into this X6. I love the lights on the rear, so much better than GLE and the Audi. It makes this car look absolutely monstrous. And then you've got double spoilers. You've got one right at the top of the rear windscreen and you've got like a devil horned one on the boot, much like the CS BMW models. I love that side detail like you have on the M2 with the reflectors making the rear arches look that much wider and the diffuser, again, very aggressive. Massive round pipes finished here in black. To me, this is the best looking performance SUV coupe of this size that's available. Forget the Urus, forget the vanilla looking new GLE 63S. It's the X6M for me and I'm biased. You also get other colors, including this, which is my favorite. It's the purple. Let's go inside, let's have a look at the interior, which is surprisingly one of the best I've seen in a luxury SUV. Now, how special looking is this interior? I know we've got the bicolor merino leather in here, which of course accentuates things even further because you've got dual tone leather, you've got the hexagonal M specific stitching, you've got X6M in the top of these lovely and comfortable bucket seats here. You've got leather that flows into the lower part of the dash and the center console as well, which is all stitched to match. But the first impression you get when you set in is just wow. It's like when you look at the new 8 series, which we looked at as our first video last year, this interior, just every part of it is trimmed with leather. We've got Alcantara headlining, of course, the new M steering wheel as the M5 started. Just like in the 8 Series review, we noticed shapes from like the outside grille and the air vents here looking exactly the same in terms of the shape. High quality materials like aluminium. You're just blown away as soon as you sit in this car. Now, just like in every BMW, this part of the center console angled towards the driver as is part of BMW heritage. It's a very specific number of degrees as well. And above that, you see the BMW Live Cockpit system, which is of course the latest one that's available now. You've got a touchscreen here, digital display in front of you in the driver's zone as well. But as far as MCAR goes, this is a new system that's been introduced since the M8. And what we have is a new drive unit here, which has got some very important buttons that I want to talk to you about. First is the setup button, which you click on here, then you see a familiar screen as you've seen in the past where you can look at chassis, steering, braking, MX drive, engine, and you can set all of those right from this setup button here, not having to go deep into the system or set a shortcut like you used to have to do in the past. The other button that is brand new is the M mode button. Now, when you press that, you can switch from road, which is essentially a comfort setting, go into sport where driving systems become inactive and things become a bit sportier, or the best bit I think, which no one else does, you hold down the M mode button it goes into a track mode that then shows you less stuff on the displays in front of you because as we know, displays can be distracting, bright, etc. And in track mode, you don't see any of that. You just get what you need as a driver. This is a brilliant addition. I also love the fact that we have a gear stalk selector here, rather than me being used to the, the annoying stalks up here that Mercedes have, for example. This is nice, it's trimmed nice. You've got the Tricolor M colors here, M embossed into the top of the gear selector 
as well. And once you get used to the ergonomics of this, it's pretty easy to use. The other thing you'll notice in the interior is splashings of red everywhere. This is the MDNA. Uh, start stop button is the most obvious one as you start the car up. But of course you've got the M1 and M2 button, just like the M5 originally introduced. Here you can set up whatever you see in that setup screen I said as your own choices for both M1 and M2. I love the way that this looks. Now another part that I really like is a small thing, but I think it's important and you feel it a lot while you're driving is there's ample room to put your hand here. There's quite a massive part of this door card. Then you've got the nice quilting and the merino leather here. And then you notice on the door handle again, it's that grill shape like you have on the front, just a half version of it. Even the buttons mimicking that. There's some really nice attention to detail as far as specific shapes to do with BMW within the interior as well. Now sitting in the rear of an SUV coupe, it's important for you guys when you're considering whether you wanna buy this car or not. I'm 5'10", I've got good headroom, legroom is a little bit lacking though, and the boot space is pretty damn good, I think. Seats are very, very comfortable in the rear as well, so just bear all of this in mind when you're considering the X6 over the brilliant X5M as well. So a really special interior. I like the X6M badging inside here as well. I love the carbon fiber. I think you should go for it. It's in a lot of places, unlike a lot of cars, and really helps make this car look premium. But it all kind of falls to the wayside because an M product is about the ultimate driving machine. And that's what this car has to prove to us that it is worth buying over brilliant cars like the M50 cars. So let's get this car started and see what the X6M competition can do when driven hard here in Arizona. <laughs> So, X6M competition, immediately you can hear the V8 sounding really, really good. Now, bear in mind guys, that as far as the sound of this car goes, it's non-European spec. So we're talking USA, Russia, Australia, etc. Um, I don't know what the car is going to sound like in Europe and in the UK, but do not go on this purely. Yes, the tune of the sound, but certainly not the volume. Now, for your information, I have stuck the car into Sport Plus as far as the engine goes. The chassis is set to Sport and we've got comfort on the steering and on the brakes. And I'm going to shift that around during this review. But generally, we want to see how does this car compare to a smaller performance cars like the Stelvio and larger, supposedly better cars like the Urus. Now, I'm currently in M mode road. Now, when you press this, do that, the display in front of you changes significantly to a more driver focused one. I can see the gears, I mean, I can see the speed. The revs are a bit more easy to understand. I like this change because it's something I complained about in the M5 about this area not changing. So, well done on that BMW. Now, we've got some nice windy roads ahead of us. Let's see how this car performs in this because this is really the testing ground for it, isn't it? It's about how does a big SUV like this with electronic roll stabilization, oh my God, this is rather good. The biggest complaint I had about the Urus, yes, it had lots of power, rear wheel steer, etc. But what it was severely lacking was steering feel. I'm hoping that BMW M with their special servotronic have attended to that element in this large SUV. Now, the steering, perhaps not as communicative as smaller SUVs like the Stelvio. It's certainly better in its communication than what we found with the Urus. And that's important because you need confidence in driving a big and powerful car like this. Remember, we've got 625 brake, 750 Newton meters. The engine is sweet. Immediate responses from the Hot V. It's got some serious poise, this car. What I feel a big difference between this and the previous X6 is how good the roll stabilization is and how quick it is to react because that's something that you really need in a large SUV like this. And this is really what I hope when it comes to handling from BMW M, especially on such a large car. I mean, it still is 2.2 tons, right? But still, you have expectations of M and they really deliver with this car. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about power. 625 brake horsepower versus the previous car. You really, really do feel it in this. Again, we're talking power like the GT3S, 
like the M8. It's significant. What you don't get is the torque that you have, say, in the AMG cars, but the horsepower is there, and it's very addictive with the X-Drive system. And power is now that much more important for this segment of large SUVs because of how dynamic the smaller ones are. Then you've got the encroachment of the so-called super SUVs as well. And this car, it feels like it's got enough for its size, which is often a failure of many large SUVs. Do you feel power versus the previous 567 brake horsepower car? Of course you do. It's a lot of horsepower more. You also feel a lot more power in this versus something like, say, the X4M competition. And that's exactly where this car needs to sit. It needs to be that much more. In terms of comparing it to the M8, it feels less powerful because obviously this is a heavier, taller car but still pretty close for such a big SUV. I don't think the acceleration feels quite as rampant as the Urus, but I feel because the steering is better, you just feel like you're driving a much faster car. And again, that hits the expectations in terms of an M car for me. The acceleration is mad. It's so fun to do. It's that addiction of having such a powerful V8 paired to a good gearbox, good software, and a sonorous engine. Then if you switch everything back to comfort, and then when you're driving it in a more sedate way, you kind of see the focus that BMW had with this generation of X5 and X6, just in general, to make it that much more comfortable. You haven't got that much road noise. You've got a really supple and adaptive suspension, even in this M version. It does feel stiff, but I want it to feel stiff, because if I bought this, I've spent a hundred grand on something that should really feel like some kind of sports car and the looks on the road, they compound everything for me. A lot of people will argue, well, what about the X6 M50i? It's still got a V8. It's still close to four seconds, zero to 60. But that car just does not feel as powerful as this, nor does it feel as powerful as it needs to be, in my opinion. Whereas this, with this, with its 625 brake horsepower, it has the power it needs. And for me, as someone who's bought M cars in the past, you need to have the most MDNA as possible on the exterior. And the way that this car looks versus all other M cars, it's right in line with the top flagships, with the M2, with the M8, this looks as brutal. And as an M-Town citizen, you're gonna want the car that's the fastest, the most dynamic, and the one that looks the most intimidating on the road. And that's what this X6M competition does versus the 50i version. It is simply the logical end to the M formula for an X6. You always want the best of the best, and this car is. When I drive something like this, I'm thinking the Urus is in trouble. This is such a powerful car with so much capability in it, so much fun, so much road presence. BMW have built a super SUV in its own right. So in conclusion, huge amounts of power Huge amounts of fun, great handling. I really think a lot of the super SUVs that are coming are gonna have a tough fight with this X6M. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this first look drive at the X6M competition here in Arizona. It's been a blast. The car, for its size, is a brute. So if you've enjoyed this, please do like, subscribe, and share this video. And I'm gonna do as I always do, and shoot off into the distance and enjoy this wonderful M-Power car a little more. See you guys soon.